This video in the series on modelling analysis and control looks at an introduction to integral feedback. As some background, we're going to assume that you're confident in deriving closed loop transfer functions and you can see those are given there. And we're going to look in more detail at repercussions of those on typical performance criteria. Now the previous video showed that proportional design that is a choice m of s equals k, can be used to meet some performance criteria, but it's usually unsatisfactory overall. And now we're going to look at integral. So closed loop offset, a very important measure of closed loop performance is how close the asymptotic output is to the target. This is called offset. We use the final value theorem to work out the offset. So there we go. The final value theorem, the offset is given by the limit as s goes to zero, of s times 1 over 1 plus gm times 1 over s. And this is normalized for a target of 1. And you can simplify that to a formula like that if you want to be mathematically a bit uh, simple. Now, an ideal control law will lead to zero offset. So how are we going to get a zero offset? Well, in simple terms, we can get a zero offset if this term down here, 1 plus g of 0, m of 0, is infinity. And you can see therefore why we're not being too mathematically rigorous in writing these equalities. So what condition will make that term infinite? Well, the condition is quite simple. This limit, the limit as s goes to zero of g of s, m of s equals infinity if these two transfer functions include an integrator. You can see there I've put an s on its own in the denominator. So there must be an integrator that is a pole at the origin in either g or m in order to get zero offset. So we can remove the steady state offset between the target and the output if there's an integrator in either m of s or g of s. And there's a reminder there's the integrator in this g m term. But there's a warning. You also need to ensure that the closed loop is stable so that the signals are convergent. So remember, this result has come from the final value theorem, and the final value theorem only applies when signals are convergent. An example problem. Find the steady state offset for the following system. And we're going to use the standard closed loop offset formula. So there it is. There's our offset formula. Um, I've simplified it here because I know there's no integrator. And I plug in the numbers and I get the offset is 1 over 7. You can see there's no integrator in G and there's no integrator in M, so I expect there to be an offset, and indeed there is. Now, don't forget, we need to check that the loop is stable, so I've written down here the closed loop pole polynomial, and you can clearly see the pole is in the left half plane. Next example, now you can see I've included an integrator into G of S. So again, we write down our standard closed loop offset formula, but now I've been a bit more careful and I've written it in terms of these limits. And you can see, because I've got an integrator in G, I'm going to end up with a zero down here. So I get one over infinity. So the offset is zero. Again, though, I must check that the loop is stable first. So here's the closed loop pole polynomial, s squared plus 2s plus 12. I can expand that out. I can see it's got complex roots, but those complex roots are in the left half plane, so I'm stable. Next problem then. So the difference here is simply that this is a quadratic. Again, you can see there's no integrator here. So when I use my standard offset formula, I'm not surprised that I get a finite number. There is an offset. Of course, once again, please check for stability. And again, you'll see that the two poles are in the left half plane. Next problem then. So you see this time I've added an integrator into m of s. Again, let's look at our closed loop offset formula. And what you'll notice, we've got an integrator. And when we apply the formula, we get an offset of 0. Again, check for stability. And you can see I've got a root in the real root here in the left half plane and some complex roots but those are also in the left half plane so everything's fine. Now a final example again you'll see I've put the integrator into the compensator so I go to my formula 
see what happens, but you know what's going to happen because we've got the integrator, etc., etc. You're going to end up with a naught. So let's check for stability. And now we've got a problem. Yes, this real root's in the left half plane, but look at this quadratic factor. You can see the quadratic factor has got roots in the right half plane. This closed loop is unstable. So because I have right half plane poles, it's an unstable loop. The offset computation is invalid. A brief summary then. Including an integral will remove offset in principle. And indeed, it's enough to recognize the presence of the integral and state this by inspection. However, the result is only valid if the loop is stable. So you must always check stability first. In practice with high order models, this can only be done efficiently using software tools. And you'll see there's lots of information on how to use MATLAB to do these sorts of things in the extra resources. What about performance then? So what we've done so far is we've said, yeah, how do we get rid of offset? But it's interesting to ask how we might deliver other aspects of the performance, such as rise time, convergence time, oscillation, and so on. Now, I'll re-emphasize again here, it's very difficult to do these things on pen and paper in practice. It'd be far too tedious. So generally, my recommendation to you is get familiar with the software tools and use them. And that's what we're going to do here. So I've generated a number of closed loop responses for some different compensators k. So you can see my m is written as k over s, and my system is a simple quadratic. Now the open loop is given here, you see we've marked it, and the open loop in this case is not too bad, but it settles at 0.8, so there's a 20% offset there, and that's notwithstanding other types of uncertainty. What happens if I use a small k in the closed loop? Well, you can see the responses are smooth, they do settle at one eventually. You can't see that on this diagram here, but they do. But they are very, very slow. Compare them to the open loop here. There's the open loop. And you can see with these small values of k, I'm very, very slow. So I might not be too happy with that. Let's increase k. Well, yes, that green plot is not too bad. It is still quite a bit slower than the open loop, but it's reasonably smooth and it gets to no offset. So you might be happy with that. If you increase k further still, you're now getting speed of response, which is similar to the open loop. You can see that with this curve and this curve, but they are rather oscillatory and that won't be acceptable in practice. And obviously, if you make k even larger, you'll get instability. Second example, then, you can see the only difference here is if you look at the example at the bottom, it's now a cubic example for the same principles. If you look at the open loop, You'll see the open loop has got a very fast response, but interestingly, you see it's got this sort of overshoot here and then comes back. And again, we've got an offset. This one settles at 1.2. So the open loop is not satisfactory. Now, if we just use integral control with small k, you get the same pattern. You can see it's very, very slow. Yes, it's smooth. Yes, it gets to zero offset, but it's very, very slow. And you probably wouldn't be happy with such a slow response in practice. What happens if we use medium k? Well, it's a bit faster, that's okay, but it's still an awful lot slower than the open loop. Here, probably a factor of four or five slower than the open loop, so I still might not be too happy with that. If I increase k a bit more to try and get more speed of response, yes, it is a bit faster, but now I'm getting too much oscillation. And if you make k even larger, again, you get instability. So what have we done? We've investigated the potential to meet design criteria, such as specified poles, time constants, gain, offset, and damping, so forth, with just integral control. And what have we noticed? Yes, we can get rid of the offset when used alone, but integral is likely to result in poor performance elsewhere, i.e. what we notice is either it was too slow, or there was too much oscillation, or even instability. So integral on its own isn't doing the job. As instability is more likely with integral, you've got to be really careful to check stability before you proceed with everything else. And the likelihood is you're going to have to use software tools. Now, in practice, industry has found it's necessary to combine both proportional 
and integral elements in the compensation to give sufficient flexibility to both achieve zero offset and reasonable transient performance. And that's what we'll look at next.